As anybody who has put a lot of effort into building a Lego house only for it to tumble over will know, major construction disasters can be devastating. There's a reason why people who work in construction are paid good money, because we need to know the best of the best are being hired for such crucial work, because if they screw up, things can go very seriously wrong. As this video will prove, these are 16 of the biggest construction mistakes in the world. Number 16. Champlain Towers, Florida's Fatal Flaw Champlain Towers South was part of a three-building complex in Surfside, Florida, housing over 130 apartments, with 80 of them occupied. Constructed in 1981, it was one of many beachfront condominiums, but with a critical difference. The building's developers designed the parking garage to serve as a structural support for the entire building. In 2018, residents noticed water infiltration corroding the reinforced steel, a problem reported but not addressed, leading to significant worsening by April 2021. A $15 million repair program was approved, but no work commenced. Issues like eroding ground-level supports, land subsidence, and potential construction corruption made Champlain Towers a disaster waiting to happen. Interestingly, the Champlain Towers South collapse highlighted the urgent need for stringent building inspections and maintenance, especially in coastal areas prone to erosion and environmental stress. Experts pointed out that regular, thorough inspections and timely repairs could prevent such catastrophic failures. This tragedy prompted changes in local regulations, aiming to enhance the safety protocols for similar structures. On June 21, 2021, the building partially collapsed without warning, resulting in one of the deadliest structural engineering failures in U.S. history. Only 35 people were rescued from the rubble, with the collapse incurring approximately $1 billion in compensation. For issues that could have been rectified with $15 million in repairs, this remains an unforgettable and tragic mistake. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 15. Glencairn Tower, Scotland's High-Rise Headache In the 1960s, high-rise buildings were seen as the homes of the future, Major cities in Scotland were filled with these villages in the sky, which were once considered the pinnacle of modern architecture. By 2011, however, opinions had changed, and buildings like Glencairn Tower and Motherwell were seen as eyesores. The North Lanarkshire Council decided that something had to be done about the unsafe and unattractive building. With refurbishments estimated at 10 million, 13 million, the council opted for demolition instead. However, this plan soon encountered numerous financial obstacles. Beyond the initial demolition cost, the discovery of deadly asbestos throughout the tower added another $500,000 to the bill. This was a significant expense, especially considering that demolishing low-cost housing typically costs around $10,000 per home. The demolition of Glencairn Tower, initially budgeted under $1 million, ended up costing 166% more than anticipated. The demolition itself was a spectacle, but the story doesn't end there. The plan to replace Glencairn Tower with new low-cost housing never materialized. This oversight meant that not only did developers face financial losses, but former residents were left without homes. The entire project, marked by escalating costs and unmet promises, stands as a colossal blunder in urban planning and development. Number 14. The Citadel Tower, the Monumental Miscalculation High-rise buildings have always been synonymous with modernity and progress. However, not every skyscraper project reaches completion. The Citadel Tower, intended to be a landmark in a bustling metropolis, faced numerous setbacks. Construction began with much fanfare, promising state-of-the-art facilities and luxurious apartments. But as the project progressed, a series of miscalculations and design flaws became apparent. The structural design, which aimed for innovation, ended up being overly ambitious, 
Engineers soon realized that the building's foundation could not support the planned height. Midway through construction, cracks started appearing, signaling potential structural failure. Efforts to reinforce the building were costly and complicated, delaying the project further. During this period, market conditions changed, leading to financial constraints. Investors started pulling out, leaving the project underfunded. As costs soared and timelines extended, the developers faced mounting pressure. Eventually, construction was halted, leaving an incomplete and unsafe structure. The unfinished Citadel Tower became a symbol of failed ambitions. The site, now abandoned, is a constant reminder of the importance of thorough planning and realistic goal setting in construction. The project incurred significant financial losses and also affected the surrounding community, which had anticipated the benefits of the new development. This monumental miscalculation in both design and execution serves as a cautionary tale for future architectural endeavors. Number 13. World's Tallest Tragedy, the Jeddah Tower. Expected to reach an impressive height of 3,281 feet and surpass the Burj Khalifa by 280 feet to become the world's tallest building, the Jeddah Tower was poised to be Saudi Arabia's crowning architectural achievement. The skyscraper was designed to house more than 700 residential and hotel rooms across over 167 floors. With the world's fastest double-deck elevators, capable of speeds up to 32 feet per second, the tower promised to be a marvel of modern engineering. Construction kicked off in 2013 with an estimated budget of $1.23 billion, using enough steel for eight Eiffel Towers and enough concrete for six Hoover Dams. Everything seemed on track until development stalled after reaching the 63rd floor. Interestingly, the Jetta Tower's innovative design included a unique system to withstand high winds and seismic activity, featuring a tapered structure to reduce wind load and an array of tuned mass dampers to stabilize the building. These advanced engineering solutions were meant to ensure the tower's resilience and safety, making its halt in construction even more disappointing. The project also aimed to incorporate sustainable technologies, such as energy-efficient systems and water recycling, to set new standards for eco-friendly skyscrapers. In 2018, the project faced an unexpected crisis. A series of anti-corruption purges swept through Saudi Arabia, seizing billions in assets from hundreds of businessmen, including the key figure behind the Jeddah Tower. Since then, construction has been at a standstill. Although the consortium funding the skyscraper has expressed intentions to complete it, there is no confirmed timeline. Currently, the Jeddah Tower stands unfinished and unusable, a stark reminder of the project's astronomical costs and the uncertainty surrounding its future. Number 12. The Danger Dam, Oroville's Close Call. In February 2017, 188,000 residents of Northern California received urgent evacuation orders. The cause of the alarm? The Oroville Dam, the tallest dam in the United States, which had been constructed for $25 million as a response to devastating floods in the 1950s. For nearly five decades, the dam effectively managed water levels until the winter of 2017 brought unprecedented rainfall. The reservoir's water levels soared, and a crack appeared in the dam's main spillway, quickly expanding into a 250-foot crater. The Oroville Dam crisis highlighted significant issues in infrastructure management. Investigations revealed that the emergency spillway, designed to divert excess water, had never been adequately tested under real-life conditions. Additionally, experts pointed out that routine inspections and maintenance had been insufficient, allowing minor issues to escalate into major failures. This event underscored the importance of proactive infrastructure management and the need for regular thorough assessments to prevent such crises. In a desperate attempt to manage the situation, officials shut off the main spillway, but the water levels continued to rise. The only option left was to use the emergency spillway, which had never been used before. Water began flowing down this untested spillway, eroding its surface and threatening to cause a catastrophic collapse of the dam. Fortunately, the dam held, and the evacuated residents were able to return home safely. However, the incident revealed that the spillway had been built on unstable bedrock, a critical flaw that had gone unnoticed for nearly 50 years. The damage was severe, with repair costs escalating to $1.1 billion, significantly higher than the dam's original construction cost. Number 11. 
Glass Bridge Blunder, China's Transparent Trouble In recent years, glass bridges have become a popular attraction in China, captivating tourists with their see-through walkways and stunning views. By 2016, there were over 2,300 glass bridges across the country, including the largest and most precarious of them all, the Glass Bridge, constructed for $48 million. Despite their appeal, the safety of these glass structures came into question, especially after the hit series Squid Game depicted the dangers of glass walkways. Most of these bridges are built with 50 mm thick glass, steel girders, and reinforced cement, which should make them safe. Authorities even staged events to demonstrate their safety, such as smashing the glass with sledgehammers and driving cars over them. However, the lack of national safety standards led to several accidents and fatalities. The glass bridge in Jilin Province faced a severe test in 2021 when a tourist was stranded after several glass panels shattered during a storm with 93 mile per hour winds. The incident revealed significant flaws in the bridge's design and construction, prompting a re-evaluation of safety standards. The tourist was rescued and taken to the hospital for treatment and psychological counseling, and the entire resort was temporarily shut down. This incident highlighted the urgent need for stricter regulations and better construction practices to ensure the safety of such attractions. In 2019, all glass attractions in China's Hebei province were closed due to serious safety concerns, and many have not reopened since, leading to millions of dollars in wasted construction investments. The dangers became evident when high winds damaged another glass bridge, trapping a tourist in the middle. The man required medical attention and psychological counseling after his ordeal, and the resort was shut down. These incidents underscore the urgent need for stringent regulations on glass bridges to prevent future accidents. The costs of upgrading and repairing these structures will undoubtedly be high, but they are necessary to ensure the safety of tourists. Let's hope that no more lives are put at risk due to these engineering oversights. Number 10. Sampung Department Store – Seoul's Catastrophic Collapse in preparation for the 1988 Summer Olympics, Seoul, the capital of South Korea, underwent a massive urban development surge. One significant part of this transformation was the construction of the Sampung department store. Initially planned as an apartment building, the project took a drastic turn when future chairman Lee Jun decided to repurpose it into a department store after construction had already begun. Prioritizing commercial space over residential, many of the design's original support columns were removed and replaced with elegant escalators. When the original architect objected, citing safety concerns, Lee Jun dismissed them. But his alterations didn't stop there. Further complicating matters, Lee Jun added a fifth floor to accommodate either a roller skating rink or a collection of restaurants, significantly altering the building's structural integrity. The additional floor space was intended to maximize commercial opportunities, further compromising the safety of the structure. This aggressive modification strategy resulted in a dangerously unstable building, which opened to the public on July 7, 1990. From its inception, cracks began appearing in the ceilings, but these warnings were ignored by Lee and his management team. By the morning of June 29, 1995, these cracks had worsened dramatically. Despite the visible danger, store management chose not to evacuate, fearing a loss in revenue due to the high number of customers. This fatal error became evident when, at 5 p.m., the fifth floor ceiling began to sag. By 5.52 p.m., the sounds of cracking led workers to initiate an evacuation, but it was too late. The main roof caved in, the support columns buckled, and the entire south wing of the building collapsed into the basement. The disaster injured 1,044 people and claimed 502 lives, making it one of the deadliest structural failures in modern history. The financial toll was immense, with property damage alone costing $216 million at the time, equivalent to $364 million today. Compensation to victims' families added to the financial burden. Initially, the families sought an average of $361,000 each, but were offered only $220,000. 
By 2003, payouts had totaled $300 million exhausting Lee Jun's personal fortune and symbolizing the ultimate downfall of his unethical decisions. Despite these reparations, the disaster's impact was profound, serving as a grim reminder of the cost of negligence in construction. Number 9. Hotel of Doom – North Korea's Futile Folly The Ryogyung Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea, often dubbed the Hotel of Doom, is a stark answer to the question, what went wrong? In the late 1980s, North Korean leaders wanted to create an iconic structure to rival global landmarks like the Statue of Liberty or the Eiffel Tower. In 1987, they broke ground on the Ryugyong Hotel, intending it to stand over 1,000 feet tall, host more than 3,000 rooms, and feature five revolving restaurants with panoramic city views. The grand opening was ambitiously set for 1989, but as the decade ended, the hotel was nowhere near completion. The external framework was finally finished in 1992. During its construction, the economic reality set in that North Korea's closed borders and limited tourism appeal meant the project was fundamentally flawed. Consequently, the interior was never completed, leaving the structure windowless and hollow. The Rugyong Hotel has remained an abandoned shell, symbolizing the regime's overreach. Attempts to salvage the project included cladding the exterior with metal and glass and adding LED lights for a nightly light show. While these enhancements made the building visually appealing, they did little to address the fundamental issues. One often overlooked aspect is the engineering and architectural challenges the Ryugyong Hotel posed. Constructing such a massive structure in a country with limited access to advanced building technologies and materials was a monumental task. Moreover, the lack of consistent funding and skilled labor further impeded progress. The building's design, with its pyramidal shape and extensive use of concrete, also presented significant structural and aesthetic challenges that were never fully resolved. The construction of the Rugyong Hotel has consumed an estimated $750 million, which is a staggering 2% of North Korea's entire GDP. This immense expenditure on a non-functional building underscores the project's futility. Despite intermittent attempts to complete the hotel, it remains the world's tallest unoccupied building, representing both a colossal waste of resources and a powerful metaphor for the country itself. Number 8. Danger Dam – The Oroville Disaster In February 2017, a sudden and alarming evacuation order was issued to 188,000 residents of Northern California. The cause of the emergency was the Oroville Dam, the tallest dam in the United States. Built for $25 million in response to devastating floods in the 1950s, the dam had functioned effectively for nearly half a century. However, the winter of 2017 brought unprecedented rainfall, causing the reservoir's water levels to rise dangerously. A crack in the main spillway quickly expanded into a massive 250-foot crater. The crisis at the Oroville Dam exposed significant flaws in the maintenance and inspection processes. A thorough investigation revealed that the emergency spillway, meant to serve as a last resort, had never been adequately tested or reinforced. Additionally, the dam's structural integrity had been compromised by years of deferred maintenance and overlooked warning signs. These issues highlighted the critical need for regular, comprehensive evaluations of infrastructure to prevent such near-catastrophic events. In a bid to prevent disaster, officials halted the flow through the main spillway, but water levels continued to climb. The only option left was the emergency spillway, which had never been used before. As water flowed over it, erosion threatened to cause a complete collapse, which would have unleashed devastating floods. Fortunately, the dam held firm, and the evacuated residents could return home safely. The root cause of the incident was traced to the spillway being constructed on unstable bedrock. This overlooked defect had persisted for nearly 50 years, leading to an eventual repair bill of $1.1 billion, far exceeding the dam's initial construction cost. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Why are there so many construction vehicles in this image? Is that the question you're asking yourself? I'll tell you why. When? Now, this chasm was dug to serve as the grounds for a major construction operation. Hundreds of homes were going to be built here. The problem with digging a huge chasm like this, if that, if there were torrential rains, 
it would fill it up, essentially creating a river. That's why they did it in the summer. But somebody screwed up. They didn't check the weather. You've guessed where this is going. An unexpected flash flood was coming. Overnight, a colossal river was created. And with rivers comes mud. And you cannot build safe housing atop soft, muddy ground. But there was a hard deadline. Those homes needed to be built ASAP. They had no choice but to turn this into a major operation. With a fleet of vehicles to get this place to the state it needed to be for the construction project to move ahead on the right timeline. Getting rid of the water and mud. Thousands of dollars wasted that could have been saved if they had just checked the weather. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 7. Sky Lotor, Krakow's Unfinished Giant. In the mid-1970s, Poland envisioned big plans for Krakow, including constructing the city's tallest building, the Unity Tower, intended to stand at 301 feet. However, setbacks and problems along the way meant it would take over 45 years for this tower to be completed. Construction began in 1975, but was halted in 1979 due to political turmoil. In 1981, Poland was placed under martial law, causing the building to remain unfinished. At that time, only the outer skeleton of the tower existed, abandoned amid the skyline. The incomplete structure quickly earned the nickname Skylator, or Skeletor, by the Polish public, drawing a comparison to the He-Man villain due to its eerie skeletal appearance. For decades, Skylator stood as an unfinished and somewhat haunting presence in Krakow. Interest in completing the project was rekindled in 2007, with plans submitted to increase the building's height to 426 feet. However, these plans were rejected by the Provincial Conservation Council. By 2005, the crumbling exoskeleton was valued at merely 30 million zloty, or approximately $9.9 .9 million in today's money. Interestingly, the long hiatus of Skylator turned it into a local urban legend, a symbol of political and economic instability. Over the years, it became a stark reminder of the challenges faced by Poland during its tumultuous history. The decision to revisit and finally complete the project also marked a significant shift in Poland's economic and political landscape, showcasing the country's progress and resilience. It wasn't until 2020 that the building was finally completed at an astonishing cost of $113 million. While one might think of Skylator as an underdog success story that finally bloomed in 2020, the reality is different. The initial plan was to transform the area into a bustling center, but the prolonged delay meant the completion of just one skyscraper, highlighting a significant failure in achieving the original vision. Number 6. Tilting Town Sao Paulo's Leaning Legacy Everyone knows about the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the iconic Italian landmark famous for its tilt due to being built on soft ground. Over 5 million tourists visit it each year. However, fewer people are aware of Sao Paulo in Brazil, a city with an entire town of leaning buildings. Much like Pisa's famous tower, Sao Paulo's problem stems from the soil composition. Beneath a 23-foot layer of sand lies a deep layer of clay, which is unsuitable for supporting large structures. Number 6. Tilting Town – Sao Paulo's Leaning Legacy Everyone knows about the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the iconic Italian landmark famous for its tilt due to being built on soft ground. Over 5 million tourists visit it each year. However, fewer people are aware of Sao Paulo in Brazil, a city with an entire town of leaning buildings. Much like Pisa's famous tower, Sao Paulo's problem stems from the soil composition. Beneath a 23-foot layer of sand lies a deep layer of clay, which is unsuitable for supporting large structures. Before 1968, there were no regulations on foundation depths for multi-story buildings in Sao Paulo. While buildings should ideally have foundations around 164 feet deep, those in Sao Paulo reach only 13 to 16 feet, causing them to tilt over time. In response to this issue, laws were enacted to regulate construction methods and foundation depths in the city. Despite these measures, the tilted buildings have remained with people continuing to live in them, adapting to their skewed environments. The effort to correct these structures has been limited. 
Only one building has been successfully straightened, at a cost of $1.5 million, illustrating the high expense and complexity of such undertakings. For homeowners, the problem is much more severe. Once the tilt became noticeable, property values plummeted, leaving owners facing significant financial losses if they decided to sell. The expensive repairs and the drop in property values have put residents in a difficult position. They must choose between selling at a loss or continuing to live in their tilted homes. This situation has become a cautionary tale about the importance of proper urban planning and construction standards. Number 5. Death Ray Debacle, the Vidara Hotel and Spa. Opening its doors in December 2009, the Vidara Hotel and Spa is one of the many luxurious establishments lining the Las Vegas Strip. With a staggering $8.5 billion spent on construction, you would expect that every possible mistake had been meticulously avoided. However, the hotel quickly became infamous for a particularly hazardous flaw. Around midday, the curved glass facade of the building would concentrate sunlight into a death ray that targeted the pool area, producing intense heat capable of singeing hair and melting plastic. This issue arose because the hotel's concave glass surface acted as a parabolic reflector, focusing sunlight into a 10 by 15 foot hot zone on the pool deck. This unintended design flaw turned what should have been a luxurious retreat into a potentially dangerous environment. In an ironic twist, the Vidara's reflective facade, which was meant to enhance its modern aesthetic, became its most notorious feature. To mitigate the problem, the hotel implemented various measures, including adding a special film to the windows to reduce the glare. Additionally, umbrellas and other shading devices were strategically placed around the pool area to protect guests from the intense heat. These solutions, while helpful, were not entirely foolproof, and the issue of the death ray continued to be a topic of discussion and concern. Given the hotel's hefty price tag, the presence of such a glaring issue is both surprising and disappointing. Despite these remedial efforts, the Vdara Hotel's inadvertent death ray remains a cautionary tale about the importance of thorough architectural planning and testing. If you appreciate a touch of villainous flair in your accommodations, the Vdara might just be your style. For everyone else, that $8.5 billion could have been better spent on a less hazardous design. Number 4. College Chaos, MIT's Stata Center. When thinking of prominent contemporary architects, Frank Gehry is a name that stands out. Described by Vanity Fair as the most significant architect of our time, Gehry's designs are known for their innovation and visual impact. So when MIT, one of the world's top universities, enlisted Gehry to design a new center for artificial intelligence and computer science research, expectations were high. The result was the Stata Center, a building that cost $300 million to construct, with an additional $15 million paid to Gary for his services. The Stata Center, completed in 2004, features Gary's signature unconventional design elements. Its striking appearance, with tilting towers and whimsical angles, makes it a distinctive landmark on MIT's campus. However, the building's unique aesthetic came with significant practical issues. Shortly after its completion, the Stata Center was plagued by problems including leaks, cracks, mold, and drainage issues. The building's unusual design caused snow and ice to cascade dangerously from its various projections, posing risks to those below. MIT eventually sued Gary's firm over these defects, seeking compensation for the extensive repairs required. The lawsuit highlighted the significant financial and operational burdens caused by the building's flaws. Though the suit was settled amicably, the Stata Center remains a polarizing structure. While it is visually captivating and thought-provoking, many argue that its impracticalities make it a $300 million disaster in terms of functionality. Number 3. Billion Dollar Disaster, 200 Clarendon Street, Boston Commonly known as the Hancock Tower, 200 Clarendon Street in Boston was supposed to open in 1971 but faced significant delays finally opening in 1976. Initial cost estimates of $75 million soared to $175 million during this period, equivalent to $512 million to $850 million today. However, the problems didn't stop with the budget. 
The tower's excavation involved temporary steel retaining walls that failed, causing soil shifts that damaged nearby buildings, including the historic Trinity Church, resulting in an $11 million lawsuit. This added another $53 million in today's money to the project's already inflated cost. The Hancock Tower's troubles didn't end there. Its innovative blue reflective glass panels began detaching and crashing to the ground soon after the building opened. This posed a severe risk to pedestrians, prompting authorities to close off the street below whenever wind speeds exceeded 45 miles per hour. The panels detached due to inner and outer pressure differences, necessitating the replacement of all 10,344 panels at an additional cost of $5 to $7 million, which amounts to up to $44 million today. Moreover, the building's design included significant structural challenges. The blue glass was chosen to create a sleek, modern look, but its installation and maintenance proved far more complex and costly than anticipated. This added another layer of difficulty and expense to the project, which was already struggling with its numerous flaws. The problems didn't stop there. The building's upper floors swayed excessively, causing motion sickness among occupants. To address this, a tuned mass damper was installed on the 58th floor to stabilize the structure, costing another $3 million or $18.6 million in today's money. Altogether, these issues brought the total cost to over $966 million today, close enough to consider it a billion-dollar disaster. Number 2. Galloping Gertie, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster. Currently, there are over 600,000 bridges across the United States, and many of them are quite old, with 42% constructed before 1970. While some of these bridges are now considered structurally inefficient, others failed long before their flaws could be fully realized. One infamous example is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington, which cost $6.4 million to build when it opened in 1940. Adjusted for today's inflation, that figure would be a staggering $126 million. At the time, it was the third largest suspension bridge in the world, surpassed only by the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and the George Washington Bridge in New York City. Despite the significant investment, construction workers were alarmed when the bridge began to move vertically in windy conditions, earning it the nickname Galloping Gertie. The problems with Galloping Gertie stemmed from its design. It was the first bridge to utilize large beams of carbon steel anchored in concrete blocks, deviating from the traditional open truss frameworks that provided structural support for previous suspension bridges. This innovative design inadvertently created aerodynamic instability. Wind flowed both above and below the bridge deck, causing it to sway. The swaying led to a phenomenon known as aeroelastic flutter, which ultimately resulted in dramatic twisting movements. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse has become a pivotal case study in engineering and physics. Researchers and engineers have since analyzed the collapse extensively to understand the impact of aerodynamics on large structures. This event spurred significant advancements in bridge design, particularly the incorporation of wind tunnel testing and other aerodynamic considerations to prevent similar failures in future projects. The lessons learned from Galloping Gertie have contributed to the safety and stability of modern bridges worldwide. Just four months after opening to the public, the bridge collapsed spectacularly into the water below. Miraculously, there were no fatalities. The last person to cross the bridge, Leonard Coatsworth, lost his car and his dog Tubby in the incident. Coatsworth received compensation totaling $50,000 in today's money for his losses. The bridge's collapse, a $6.4 million blunder, resulted in a substantial financial loss and highlighted the importance of considering aerodynamic effects in bridge design. Number 1. Demolition Derby – Kunming's High-Rise Catastrophe until September 2021, Kunming, the capital of China's Yunnan province, was home to 15 high-rise buildings owned by Yunnan Hong Real Estate. Due to the volatile Chinese property market, these buildings, which cost around 1 billion Chinese yuan, approximately 157 million, remained unoccupied for eight years. The construction company ran out of funds in 2013, and the basements of these buildings became submerged in rainwater, causing irreparable damage. With rising maintenance costs and continuous financial losses, 
The only viable solution left was a dramatic demolition. The building's abandonment highlights broader issues within China's real estate market, where rapid urban development has often outpaced demand. This phenomenon has led to numerous ghost cities, where infrastructure exists without occupants. The Kunming high-rises are a stark example of the risks involved in speculative real estate ventures and the potential for significant financial losses when projects are left incomplete. In a striking spectacle, more than six tons of explosives were strategically placed at 85,000 blasting points to bring the buildings down. The entire demolition took only 45 seconds, reducing 157 million worth of property to rubble. The event underscored the enormous waste and financial mismanagement associated with the project. In just under a minute, what was intended to be a thriving residential area was transformed into a large pile of debris. The Kunming Demolition Derby is a poignant example of how economic miscalculations and market instability can lead to colossal financial losses, rendering massive construction efforts futile. Which of these construction disasters do you believe was the biggest mistake, or do you think some of that money was well spent? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time.